What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's the day we're going to try to start this engine on the engine stand. So hit that subscribe button and let's get started. Okay guys, I'll give you the brief tour of what I've got done so far. I'm going to put you on time lapse and do some other things, but I promise We'll just cut pieces out of each one. But starting with the front, I told you I ordered the um, three bolt throttle body adapter to the four bolt intake. I'll leave a link to the part number in the description below. But I've got it put on. I have got a um, plug I'm gonna plug the PCV hole with. Also, I ordered an adapter to fit my LM7 harness to go to the new the new style map sensor. Um, also, I have the adapters for the 30 pound injectors, the EV1s, to go to the Multec. They're already on here. So all that's ready to go. The coils are here. I'm going to, I was gonna put my headers on, but I think I'm gonna put my manifolds on to start it. I've got all my plug wires. I gotta put the plugs and plug wires. But before we do that, I'm going to drain the oil back into the pump up sprayer pump it up one more time before we start it put my manifolds on we've got to take out the oil pressure sending unit here and i'm going to plumb in a pressure gauge and i'll use this same adapter fitting these uh adapter fittings i'll put those back those part numbers back in the uh, description below as well as if you're interested in this equus gauge i'll do the same I have my fuel system out from under the truck, the fuel pressure regulator slash filter. The lines are made. I'm gonna connect and tighten all these. That way I can check my, check for leaks. All the way back to the tank, and then we'll run some wires back here to the fuel pump. I've got the wires labeled. P for purple is the gauge wire for the fuel sending unit, and then the gray wire is for the actual pump. So I'm gonna get all this tightened up Put a little fuel in here. We will have to get our harness installed. I don't have the loom back on it yet. I'm just gonna drape it over and start it, hook it up to the battery, and we will hook the little trigger up here and see if we can vroom vroom, start her up. So stay tuned. I'm gonna put you on time lapse, get all that done. We'll just do pieces, just kind of showing you. And then when I get it complete, for those of you that may have not ever started a engine on the engine stand, I'll show you how that's done. I'm hoping, keeping fingers crossed, this engine will crank and run. So we will see. I even put me a little summit pressure gauge on here to see how much fuel pressure we got. So let's get started.
Okay guys, you just saw where I tried to crank the engine and it did not start. I had some of my friends ask me, uh, are you going to show your initial start on the video or are you gonna crank it and then, and you know, let it run or whatever. But I'm always transparent with you guys. I want you to see and experience the same problems that I experienced. So you saw initially where the engine would not start. There were several problems that I found uh, right off the bat. The first one, if you guys, you guys may know more about LS engines and this may be all old news to you. But the first issue I found, I wasn't getting any spark. So I worked with it, worked with it, worked with it, couldn't figure out what was going on. I finally, I went to bed that night thinking what could cause it not to spark? And I thought, the crankshaft sensor. Maybe I forgot to plug it up. So I started retracing my steps, plugged up the crankshaft sensor, bam, that's what it was. Well, then I initially started trying to crank the engine over and it would try to run and then it would backfire. So what was the second problem? Well, I had gotten a hurry putting the harness on the engine and I had the injectors on the wrong side. I had one, three, five, seven on the left side and two, four, six, eight on the right side. That still wasn't causing my backfiring issue. I talked to one of my, my automotive friends, Greg, he was telling me, you know, hey, try this, try that. And he said, I think, your, I think your coil wires are crossed. And I'm like, well, the guy that took this off the engine, remember guys, I bought this engine used and the guy that took the harness off the engine, he had labeled everything as he took it off. So I just took it for granted that he had marked the coil pack wires or the coil uh, plugs correctly. So I kept saying, well, he marked everything and everything was right. And, and I, 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 they, they don't look like they will physically sh stretch and fit. Well, sure enough, guys, I took the coil pack wires and swapped them and the engine, uh, as you, you're fixing to see, will crank right up and run. So I wanted to be upfront with you guys and maybe share that information with you. It may be something that might help one of you guys. If you're not getting any fire at all on your plugs, could be your crankshaft sensor is bad or you forgot to plug it up. Um, always check the simplest, the cheapest, and the quickest things first um, before you throw any money at it. Uh, I, was, I was ready to pull my hair out. I didn't know what to do. So. I started retracing my steps, going back to my lt1swap.com wiring schematic and traced the, uh, when I started tracing the injector colors to make sure they were on the right injector, I found that I had crossed up my injector plugs to the opposite sides of the engine. And then I took for granted that what somebody else did was correct. I know what I do and I can go back and trace my steps but I kept taking for granted that the guy that took this engine apart when he labeled it was correct. So I swapped those coil pack wires and as soon as I did, stay tuned and I'll show you what happened. Okay guys, this is my positive source going back to my fuel tank. Let me show you. You'll see this goes back over to my fuel pump. And when I plug it up or turn it on, I'm just gonna clip this onto the battery. You can hear my fuel pump running. And we have 58 pounds of fuel pressure. So with 58 pounds of fuel pressure and a push of the trigger, That's it guys, it runs. So stick around for the outro. I'm gonna tell you about what else I found and I'll let you guys go. All right, that's gonna wrap up the video guys. It runs, it's live. Now I can start mating up my 
Turbo 400 transmission, start fitting everything in the truck, building cross members, getting everything set in there, motor mounts, engine mounts, all that good stuff. So just from, I told you to stick around, I wanted to tell you some things. Tips and tricks. If you're not getting any fire, check your crankshaft sensor. Always check your injectors. I screwed up and put them on the wrong side. That was my fault. But what I trusted was the gentleman that took this out of the truck marked the left coil pack plug, the right coil pack. He marked the right coil pack plug, the left. It was acting just like a 350 Chevrolet V8 that was a half a round out of time. It would try to run, then it would backfire. Um, always check for yourself your plugs. What I told you to stick around for, I also figured out when, when I was spinning that engine over with my little rope trigger, um, it was filling the cylinder walls. It was purging gas in there. So I did fortunately think about when it spun over and spun over and spun over and didn't crank, I pulled the plugs out, blowed all that gas out of those cylinders. It did cause my oil to smell a little bit more gassy than I would have liked. So I did change the oil and put fresh oil in it before I got it running. So remember, if it's not firing, it still fi could potentially be injecting gas into the fuel rail. So keep in mind, you know, that could be happening. As for the upcoming videos, I'm waiting on my disc brake kit from Trick Chassis to come in, as well as the center section. That should be here within the, the you know two or three more weeks, I hope. Um, we're gonna build a gauge panel for the truck, and then uh, some other things to start buttoning the truck up. We'll start putting engine mounts in, building transmission cross members, things like that. But as for now, it's alive, guys. It runs. I'm gonna put my headers on it. I'm gonna change out the oil pan. Maybe I'll show you some of that, because you gotta cut the valley pan or the windage tray in the bottom to get that uh, Holly 302-1 look-alike pan that I got to go in. I'll probably make some videos of that. So as always, the links to the parts that I use, the injector adapter plugs, the remote starter plug, the map sensor uh, adapter plug, things like that. All that, the, the Summit fuel pressure gauge, it'll all be in the description below. I'll put that down there for you guys. If your subscribers coming back, Thanks for subscribing. Smash that like button. Give me some comments, feedback. I like talking to you guys. If it's the first time stopping into DT Performance, hit that subscribe button, guys, and the bell notification and smash that like button. I appreciate you stopping in. If you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. And with all that being said, guys, I'm going to end the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.